Motorsport TV Live, brought to you by Motorsport Tickets, the dedicated motorsport experiences provider. Hello and welcome to Motorsport TV Live with me, Bryn Lucas, bringing you all the latest stories from around the world of motorsport. Ignacio Cornejo takes the bike's win on stage nine of the Dakar. Heike Kovalainen heads to WRC and Dale Earnhardt set to test NASCAR next gen at Daytona. All those stories and more, a lot, a lot more coming up here on Motorsport TV Live. Honda rider Jose Ignacio Conejo picked up his second stage victory of the 2022 Dakar Rally on Tuesday as KTM's Matthias Volkner moves into the overall lead. The 287km test near Wadi Adawasa was dominated by the Vactory Honda team with Conejo and 2020 winner Ricky Brabeck trading the top spot throughout the day. Conejo held the early advantage after the first waypoint of 40 kilometers, but was quickly leapfrogged by, by Brabeck. The 30-year-old went on to build a smaller buffer for himself until the fourth waypoint, but was powerless to prevent the Chilean rider from repassing him. Brabeck eventually slipped to third in the day's standings behind the leading KTM of Kevin Benavidez. And this is how it all looked at the end of the day's stage for the bikes. Well, Benavidez second, 1 minute 26 seconds back, and Brabeck back there in 1 minute 47 off the top spot. Valkner coming home fourth, and this is what it means for the overall standings then in the bikes category. Volkner has the overall lead by 2 minutes and 12 seconds from Sam Sunderland, and Van Beveren of France 3 minutes and 56 seconds back. Meanwhile, in the cars, Toyota enjoyed its strongest showing of the 2022 Dakar Rally in Stage 9 as Janel de Villiers led a 1-2-3 finish for the Japanese manufacturer ahead of Henk Lattigan and overall leader Nasser al -Attaya. With the Audis of Matthias Ekstrom and Stefan Pedahansel forced to open the road following their 1-2 finish on Monday, the three Toyotas duped it out for victory. And here's... The stage results, as you can see, Ekstrom incredibly ended up just two minutes, seven seconds off the pace of the Toyotas in fourth, while Loeb finished a further four seconds back in fifth after running as high as second early on in the stage. This is how the overall standings look at the end of the day. Despite a third place finish for Alataya, he's still got nearly a 40 minute lead over closest rival Loeb. Well, staying with the Dakar and the track, the truck, sorry, are still out on the stage with Kamaz looking to be under pressure on stage nine. Andre Karganov, who was in the lead after 118 kilometers, lost more than seven minutes at the following checkpoint, handing command of the stage to Eduard Nikolaev. Dmitry Sotnikov has moved up into second place with Big Shock Racing's Martin Machik not far behind, looking like he'll take third spot on the day's podium. So this is how the stage has finished up for the trucks. Two cameras leading the way and then Magic there for Big Shock Racing coming home third. And this is what the overall does, or what it does for the overall standings. Sotnikov leads the way, three cameras masters, one, two, three, and then it is the Czech team with Lepre in fourth. And this is what the competitors have to face for tomorrow's stage 10. The long liaisons and sand packed offering make this trek to southern Saudi Arabia one of those stages that drags on and on and on. The first 200 kilometers of the special will be nothing but sand and dunes as far as the eyes can see as the competitors jump from one valley to another. Eventually the landscapes will change at the end of the day in the evening or at night as many entrants will be delayed by the complexity of the stage. Formula E news now and Maserati is set to make its return to motorsport by joining the series as a new manufacturer from the 2022-23 season in time for the Gen 3 regulations. The Italian mark will end its lengthy hiatus from single-seater racing to join the all-electric championship next year in partnership with a yet-to-be-announced team. Having become part of the Stellantis Automotive Group at the start of 2021, Maserati is due to launch an electric variant of its MC20 sports car ahead of plans to have electric variants of its full range by 2025. 
The Maserati brand today is going back to the future, going back to its roots of racing, says Maserati CEO David Grasso. I'm extremely happy and excited to announce that Maserati is the first Italian brand to join the Formula E Championship from 2023, season nine. It couldn't be a better way to start the new year. IndyCar now and Rahal Letterman Lanigan Honda's rookie Christian Lungard says he's impressed with the car but is still discovering what can and can't be changed to tailor the handling to suit his style. The 20-year-old Dane who enjoyed one day of testing at Barber Motorsports Park and then a two-day race weekend at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway road course last August has been testing at Sebring's short course. Lungard told Motorsport.com that while he enjoyed the car's handling on the most accurate simulation of a street track that IndyCar teams can find, he's largely in the hands of his engineers in terms of what adjustments he can make. I'm lucky that the F2 car and the IndyCar are reasonably close, he said. The tyres are a little different. I'm not too worried that I won't be comfortable in the car in terms of what can be changed. The car handles the way it handles and it will handle the same way around different tracks. Big things are already expected of Lungard after his Indianapolis debut, where he started fourth, going on to a 12th place finish. Meanwhile, in Formula 3, Arthur Leclerc is set to stay with Prima Racing for his second season in 2022 and will also continue his association with the Ferrari Drivers Academy. The driver took two wins in his rookie season in 2021 at Monza and Zandvoort as well as pole and P2 in Budapest, finishing 10th in the standings with 79 points. Leclerc's teammate, Dennis Hauger, took the F3 driver's title in 2021, while the team narrowly missed out on the team's championship to Trident. Ollie Colwell, who completed their lineup, finished in 8th. Well, don't go anywhere. We've lots more from the news of, uh, lots more news, sorry, from the world of motorsport coming up here on Motorsport TV Live. Two Wheel News now and Paul Espargaro says he gained a more realistic perspective in 2021 of how Honda MotoGP teammate Mark Marquez is so fast. The 2013 Moto2 World Champion switched from KTM to the factory Honda squad last season, ending a largely difficult campaign with one podium and pole position to his credit. Despite missing four races through injury and crashing out of four others, Marquez won three times and was comfortably top Honda rider coming seventh in the standings, 42 points clear of Espargro. I'd always competed with Mark, but being on equal terms in the same team has given me a more realistic perspective than I could have had before, Espargro said. There are circumstances in which I was surprised by how fast he can be and others in which I expected him to be faster. And Spargo will remain with Honda for the 2022 season, with HRC seemingly making big steps forward with its bike at the postseason Hereth test, with Spargo claiming the rear grip he'd been missing in 2021 has now been found. In WRC news, Heiki Kovalainen says he is eyeing an appearance in Japan's round of the World Rally Championship this year as he looks to step up his rallying commitments after exiting Super GT. The ex-Formula One racer has been combining his activities in Super GT with the Saad Toyota team with rally outings in Japan for some years now and he's even crowned champion of the national championships, the JN2 class, last year. While the Finn called time on his Super GT career at the end of last season, is now free to focus on contesting the full Japan Rally Championship schedule in 2022, hoping to step up to a faster R5 class car. On top of that, Kovalainen says he would like to contest the Rally Japan should the event finally go ahead this season, after being cancelled due to Japan's strict travel restrictions in both 2020 and 2021. DTM now and Rene Rast has signed a deal with Ab Sportsline for his return to the series in 2022, partnering fellow Audi driver Kelvin van der Lint. Rast left the DTM after clinching his third title in 2020 to focus on a full season programme in, in Formula E, where he guided Audi to fourth in the team's standings. 
However, with the German manufacturers subsequently leaving the all-electric series with new projects in the Dakar Rally and LMDH, RASP will return to the DTM in 2022 after just a year away, driving an Audi R8 LMS GT3 run by Abt Sportsline. Talking about his DTM comeback, Rasta said he's very happy to be back and that he never lost his desire for the DTM. News from Down Under next, and event owner of supercars and global GT Supremo Stefan Rattel are committed to making the Bathurst 12 hours happen despite surging COVID-19 cases in Australia. The east coast of Australia is currently dealing with a surge in Omicron cases, with New South Wales recording its worst day of the pandemic so far on Monday with 18 deaths, while hospital admissions are on a steep rise. The numbers have sparked renewed doubt over major events, which could affect the first two major races of the 2022 Australian season, the Bathurst 12 hour and the Newcastle 500. There's already been one date change for the Bathurst race, having been moved from its original March slot forward to avoid a clash with Sebring. Intercontinental GT Challenge boss Rattel told Motorsport.com that he's in regular contact with supercars and that there's a mutual commitment for the race to happen, even if they're forced into another date change. Reigning FAA World Endurance Championship LMP2 title winning team WRT has revealed the first drivers for its expanded two car assault on the series in 2022. Ex-Formula 2 racer Sean Galeel's move to the team after finishing runner-up in the LMP2 points with Jota last year has been confirmed. The first driver announced for the Belgian squad's second car is Angelan Rui Andrade, who won the Pro-Am LMP2 title in last year's European Le Mans series with the G driving racing squad. The car will be run under the real team by WRT Banner as a result of a link-up with the Swiss entrant, which joined the WEC last year with the French TDS racing squad. Dale Earnhardt Jr. still has no plans to return to racing in the NASCAR Cup Series, but will get another test in the series' new next-gen car. With reigning Cup Series champion Carl Larson competing this week at the Chili Bowl Nationals, Hendrick Motorsports announced Monday that Earnhardt will test Larson's number no. 5 Chevrolet on Tuesday and Wednesday at Daytona International Speedway. Earnhardt currently works as a NASCAR TV analyst for NBC. Since retiring from full-time Cup Series competition, Earnhardt has run at least one Xfinity Series race a season. His next planned race is April the 8th at Martinsville Speedway. And finally, staying with NASCAR, which is set to return to the shorter 1.99 mile track layout at Sonoma Raceway in 2022, trading in the carousel for a return to the chute section. We heard from many fans and drivers how much they loved it when we raced the chute, said Sonoma Raceway EVP and General Manager Jill Gregory. The carousel was part of the original course and we reverted back to it for our 50th anniversary in 2019 and used it again in 2021. But we raced to bring excitement and drama to the fans and an overwhelming majority of them asked us to bring back the chute. Well, NASCAR has utilised the longer 2.52 mile layout, which bypassed the chute from 2019 to 2021, with a shorter layout being used from 1998 to 2018. There you go. It was a long one, wasn't it? Well, that's it for now. I'm Bryn Lucas. Join us again here on Motorsport TV Live for all the latest news from the world of motorsport. Bye for now.